What are your thoughts on Michael Saylor's influence on the crypto space? Uh, he is full maximalist and spreads false information. Do you see this level of institutional influence as a growth obstacle? No, no, I don't really at all. I mean, uh, if you look at the trends, there's been a systematic movement of value from the proof of work side of the equation to aggregate proof of stake. The entire maximalist argument is proof of stake is evil. It's central banking. It's a Ponzi scheme. It doesn't work. It's perpetual motion. If all the value flows from one to the other and that system is sustainable and stable and it has the benefit of being millions of times more power efficient, much higher throughput and programmability, uh, it's really morally hard to keep arguing for the past. You, at some point, or like, what was that guy, uh, Paul Bunyan? Or who, who was the railroad guy maybe, who, you know, he was competing against the mechanized railroads and he ended up getting himself killed by you know, working too hard. Um, you know, laying railroad tracks. That, that's where we're at, you know. And if Mike wants to run around and, and tell us how great Bitcoin is and how everything else is a scam and it's bad, I mean, it's his prerogative. He's putting his money where his mouth is. He's invested hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in Bitcoin. Uh, and he's a real bright guy. And I respect his work in the education sector. And I frankly don't feel that he's uh, creating problems in the dialogue. He's just expressing his philosophical beliefs. I do believe in general that Bitcoin maximalism has created an intolerable level of toxicity that is very damaging to the overall adoption of cryptocurrencies and for new people entering the space. You know, when you have guys like Lex Friedman or Eric Weinstein or others, they come on in and they're intellectually curious and they're asking just basic questions of why do people care about cryptocurrencies? And suddenly they trip up on a holy war of proof of work versus proof of stake, Bitcoin versus the altcoin space, maximalism. And the minute they say one thing or the other, they either get brutally attacked or, you know, loving adulation. Uh, that's not a healthy dynamic. That's that's not good. It's not like when you download Google Chrome as a web browser, suddenly vagabonds from you know, Mozilla Firefox show up and break your mailbox or, you know, they call you an evil person or you're, you're stupid or something like that. I mean, it's like we don't have that level of polarization with anything else. But yet with the crypto space, we seem to have descended that way. Um, people talk their book. Uh, Mike Milvergratz talks his book. Uh, Tim Draper talks his book. Mike Saylor talks, talks his book. Uh, and they're going to do that, as does Mark Cuban. Uh, and, you know, people take their bets. I, I believe firmly in Cardano uh, because of the roadmap we have and because we built it to be something that's around in decades. And we also are doing the work of going to Africa, going to the developing world, bringing in millions to tens of millions of users, many of which are unconnected, many of which have intermittent power, many of which have feature phones, not even smartphones. And we've gotten to the point where we're talking to cell phone manufacturers considering even buying cell phone manufacturers. We we basically helped build up an ISP that's deploying internet over millions of people. We're talking to ATM manufacturers to create cash in, cash out points. We're talking to MFIs, microfinance institutions, about creating inflows of direct foreign investment and blockchain-based identity. We're propagating blockchain credentials across the entire continent of Africa. We're even talking about setting up the African Credential Alliance. All of these things are necessary to build an ecosystem. And they take years to decades to fully realize. Now they will bring in tens to hundreds of millions of high value users over time into the Cardano ecosystem because it's been bespoke built for that. Not the Bitcoin ecosystem, not the Ethereum ecosystem, not the Solana ecosystem. And because all of that is vertically integrated and those on and off ramps are B2G to C plays and the government is bringing them in, uh, they're not going anywhere. They're going to Cardano. So I'm patient. I'm a young guy. I'm 33. The ecosystem is young and the technology is young. And it, it, what matters is the evolution and what matters is the foundations. And when you bet on Bitcoin, you're betting on 12 year old technology that doesn't really upgrade very quickly, that has a cult behind it about proof of work, that refuses to acknowledge any innovation anywhere else in the space. When you bet on Cardano, you're betting on an ecosystem that is evolving at a very rapid pace, that has a multi-paradigm computing model. So you use different smart contract stacks and can admit side chains and so forth. That is built with formal methods and peer review. So there's an enormous amount of foresight that goes into the rollout and deployment of the technology. 
uh, that's built with the community, very collaborative, dozen development companies, and it's turning into a larger open source project that has $1.4 billion of uh, capital behind it in the largest decentralized treasury in the world, which is controlled by the community itself, and has high growth metrics year by year. Uh, just as an example, the last three epics have had more transaction volume in them than every single transaction in 2017 and 2018 combined. So we're growing rapidly as an ecosystem. When you bet on Cardano, that's what you're betting on, uh, is, is that trend and saying, okay, if we keep that trend and these things keep happening and that ecosystem development keeps happening with a foundation that's politically neutral in Switzerland with an independent board with a billion dollars of capital behind it, a decentralized a uh, you know, grant agency that goes out and injects capital into all kinds of things to build up the ecosystem, a very driven business strategy that has all kinds of VC at all kinds of different levels and great developers and great engineers and great scientists and a big decentralized brain. Where will that movement be taken in five years and 10 years and 15 years? That's what I would bet on because I don't see any of those things with Bitcoin. I see this bizarre behavior where you just believe if you buy something, you do no work, no one does any work, and automatically you wake up and everything is worth 10 times more. And there's no desire of social responsibility and commitment and investment there. Just buy Bitcoin and you're done. Here at Cardano, ADA is the beginning. There's catalysts, there's expert participation, there's delegation, there's voting, there's all these things you do. There's this huge community and then you have problems you wanna solve. And so you start building and deploying things and you have dApps and there's this vibrant ecosystem there. And it's you to decide that. There are so many stake pool operators. They, they donate food to kids in Argentina. They give clean drinking water to people in Nigeria. They electrify people's homes, give them lights for the first time in their life in Kenya. They do things in Vietnam, they do things in Indonesia, they, they make this protocol their own and they feel a social responsibility to it. With Bitcoin, I don't see a lot of that in that maximalist mindset. I just see a very closed-minded thing. You know, it, it wasn't that way always. When I first entered the Bitcoin space many years ago in 2011, I saw really amazing people who were very evangelistic and they felt a social and moral responsibility for propagating Bitcoin. Roger Ver, for example, before the whole split, he would make it his mission in life to make as many businesses as possible except Bitcoin. You get his haircut, you tell the barber you need to take Bitcoin. You go to the coffee shop, he wouldn't leave until the lady took Bitcoin. Go and eat at a restaurant, he wouldn't leave until they, they took Bitcoin. He was always selling, always hustling, always pushing Bitcoin. And that was the culture and the ethos. I don't see that culture and ethos from the rank and file people. Maybe I'm just blind to it now. And I really don't appreciate the brutal personal attacks that they make. It's not, we disagree with you. you. You are a scammer, you're a liar, you're an evil person. And I, I just don't see how that adds any value. And has Mike contributed to that? You know, it, his statements are his statements. I don't feel it's particularly hostile. He's never really said anything about us uh, and that's fine. But I do believe maximalism in general as a concept is a road to nowhere, and it's uh, a religion at this point.